Here is another teacher tip with Mr. Long and we are looking at exam papers and we all know that we need to set some exam papers and the biggest problem I hear from teachers is how we get the layout, how do we get everything where we want them to be, like where the mark allocation is supposed to go and things like that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do that type of structure. So what I'm going to do is I've got an exam paper and the first little tip before I even get into what I'm going to do is make sure that you name your exam papers appropriately so that they're easy to find. So you don't have to be opening up a million documents to find exactly which paper you want to get. So when I name my files, I name it whatever the subject is, then the paper like P1 or P2 for paper 1 or paper 2, then I have the grade, so G10 or G8 for what the grade is and then the year and then the term that way I know exactly that this is the English paper 3 uh, grade 10 2022 term 1 assessment for things like that so you can name them very specifically so that when you are looking for resources from old exam papers that you know exactly what, what the, each file is that you've got saved otherwise you spend a lot of time opening and closing documents to find out what what was this paper again I don't know so first thing I'm going to do is going to structure my exam paper using tables for this video so tables are a useful way to just line things up quite nicely and then at the end of the paper we will then before we print it we will then hide the lines of the table so that you can't actually see the table so how are we going to do that so I'm going to insert into uh, my table over here so yeah we've got to insert there's the table option now I'm going to insert four rows or well, not four rows four columns I'm going to make sure that I've got four columns I'm going to just get two for now two rows but four columns and this is what I'm going to do I'm going to make the first column very thin this is where I'm going to put the number like one or whatever like that question one or whatever like that and then I'm going to have two lovely little row or columns right at the end which are going to be for the mark allocation. So I'm going to use one to do the individual questions and then one for the total for that particular question. So for example, this is one mark, this is two mark, and then the total for question one was 15. So something along those lines. And you can obviously drag them the way you want them to be um, and use that type of technique. So we can do something along those lines. So. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do question one. So this is question one. So sometimes above you don't mind writing the little details like this is question one. Okay. And so this is question one. And then we're going to write our scenario over here. So I went and just ran, wrote some random text here. And so you can see I'm not an English teacher here. I'm just doing this little random text. It will make it look nice and pretty and make it italics because that's a quote. Consider the following text. And then we can say, okay, now question one. Now we can do it in multiple ways. We can either do, if you want to put the 1.1 the underneath like that, you could do that for the question. You could also use uh, tabs to basically make a brand new line to make a bit of a gap if you want to do something like that. Or you can do like the 1.1 over there. Now the moment I press space, it'll probably also type some text. It might automatically convert it to numbering. And then say we can have a comment. Like, Explain the humor in the... Oh, how do I spell humor, Mr. Long? The humor in the following statement. Okay. So let's go correct our, obviously we're going to correct our spelling of that. So there's our question. Um, and we can over here, we can, we can actually put that up a bit there. And we can go, okay, this is a question that is two marks, for example. So we can do something along those lines. And then we can press tab and then tab again if you want. So you're starting to see the structure of your paper. 1.2, um, who is the statement directed at? That. Obviously, I'm making up some random silly questions, um, but you get the idea. And so we can go control. We can put some nice little little text there, so we can get the idea. Okay. Um, so we can do that type of thing. Um, and so uh, this way, you start to see that your paper is nicely structured. Your text will never go beyond the mark allocation over here because it only fits inside this particular block, and so on and so on. So you keep going along those particular lines. So I went ahead and just wrote some more questions. They're, they're ridiculous questions. You can see I'm not an English teacher, but you get the idea. So there we got a nice little question with some four parts where we can have nice little sections of it. And um, some things that I want to change about the paper. First of all, um, I actually want to use some proper numbering here. So if I actually delete this and type uh, and just go 
if I select the numbering option over here, so if I go, hey, I want to put numbering, okay, actually no, 1.3 entered, you see it'll do the numbering for me, so it does it nicely aligned in that. So you can do that, so if I type 1.2, it doesn't do anything, but if I say, hey, this is a numbering system, but we take that numbering system away and go 1.2, it will use the numbering side. So we can do that type of structure if you want, so that's nicely lined. Um, the other thing to take note of, if you've got a question that goes over multiple lines, um, and you'll notice I don't like the mark allocation to be there, I want it to be at the bottom. So for this column particularly, I'm going to select the whole column. I'm going to come here to these table tools, I actually want to go to the layout, I always want it to be at the center but at the bottom, so that the, the, the numbering will always be at the bottom. So there we go. And then the last the last couple of things is obviously this is the end of the question. And sometimes we have a nice little section over here that says, okay, this is the um, the total for this particular question. So now there's a lovely tool because we've got tables, we've got a, we've got these little formulas we can use, but it only works with like the columns above it. So look at this little this is the little trick I sometimes use. So I will put in a formula over here. And now that's not exactly what I want, but it, I'll show you the little tricks. So I'm gonna say this is a formula and I want to sum open bracket what? I want to sum all the values above it. All the values above it. So there we go. Sum of above. So there we go. So it actually sums all those values. So if we come back later and we change these to a three or whatever like that, or we change it to a three, let's go take it back. You can actually right click on this and you can actually update the field and it will update automatically, um, which is quite nice. So you can do that, but I don't want, first of all, I don't want my thing, my mark to be there. I want it to be over there. I want it to look something along these lines where it says something along those lines. So that's what I want it to look like. So I'm going to actually make this text white so you can't see it. That's the first little trick there. So go home and we're going to say make that text white so we can't see it. And then here we're going to say equals sum, or not sum, sorry. We're actually going to put a formula in, Mr. Long. So we're going to go back to loud, put in a formula. And we're going to say we want this, the formula to be the sum of all the left. In other words, we're going to sum all the values to the left of it, which is only that white little block there. And we want the format to be square bracket and zero meaning a number square bracket i want it to look like that so let's just see what it looks like and there we go so it puts it in now you might be there's a, there's a negative there yeah because unfortunately when you put numbers in brackets like this it makes it think that that's actually a negative number so that's exactly how i want it to look but i don't want it to be considered a negative three so what i'm going to do to this formula a little trick again to the formula is i'm it's going to end up being a negative answer but i'm going to convert it to a positive number by using the abs function around the sum of the left and by doing that it's going to take whatever the answer is convert it to a positive number and there we go and so that's how it's going to be so if we make changes to that's a two we can actually just right click on these formulas and update them update okay you can only do one at a time but we can update this one update that field and we can update that field and there it will automatically sum all those values for you so there we go so you get that idea of that structure and then if you want to, you can carry on going like this. If you want to, just be careful then if you sum above, it's obviously going to sum all the previous ones. What I like to do is once I've got a nice question laid out, I will then copy this and paste it. And this will be for my question two. And this will be the table for my question two and so on. So there we go. That's how I'm getting my structure done. And then the last little tip before we finish, I'm going to select the whole table. And under here by the, the, the borders, I'm going to say no borders. And by doing that, you'll notice that we get the layout of how we want it to look. It looks a little bit better there. And so there we go. And so you can then, if you ever want to go change it, you can just select this and go have all borders again. And you can adjust the, the, the sizes of everything. You can do what you need to do. But that's how you can make your exam paper using tables. And so this one will be question two. And so on and so on. So you can go, okay, we want to make this 2.1. And this is this question and so on. So this is the structure that you can use using tables. It's a nice little structure you can use. You got nice little totals running over here if you want. Or you can just manually total them. But that way it can hopefully help you with your structure, hopefully with your totaling, especially if there's a lot of questions, you can just automatically just right click and update the field and it will update automatically. And that way you can have a nice layout for your exam paper. Okay, so the tips we learned, remember, name your files correctly. When you have a table, I recommend having four uh, columns. You can have three, but four is normally ideal. One for the question, one for the, the big part of the actual text, one for the subtotal, and then one for the full total of that question 
And once you've done your layout correctly, you can click on the whole table and take away the borders. And don't forget when you click on the, the table, don't forget these table tools. So the layout you want, if you want the text to be in a particular position, you can use these layout tools over there to help you. Okay, so that might give you an idea of how to structure your exam papers. For more teacher tips, go to our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, look at our playlist, look at our video tab for all the videos that can help you with tips for teaching. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.